good day and greetings in the name of Christ. It is uh, Wednesday, the 14th of April. And I'm going to read from Luke 9, verses 1 to 6 and 10 for our Bible reading this morning from the New RSV. And then I'm going to read uh, this section called Front Porch, and the title of it is Visiting. So in between Jonathan Wilson Hartgrove's chapters, he has these little front porch, um, I don't know, kind of little stories about the life there. So he's in an intentional community, in a new monastic type community in an inner city neighborhood, and he's creating, uh, writing about creating stability there. So Luke 9, 1 to 6 and 10. Then Jesus called the twelve together and gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. He said to them, Take nothing for your journey, no staff, nor, nor bag, nor bread, nor money, not even an extra tunic. Whatever house you enter, stay there and leave from there. Wherever they do not welcome you, as you are leaving that town, shake the dust off your feet as a testimony against them. They departed and went through the villages, bringing the good news and curing diseases everywhere. On their return, the apostles told Jesus all they had done. Visiting. Wallace is skilled in the art of visiting, having learned it firsthand from a master, his mother, Miss Carolyn. If I catch them both on the porch at the same time, I might as well cancel my plans, whatever they were. I'm going to be here a while. Most any story is fair game for front porch visits, so long as you tell it well. It doesn't have to be new. Indeed, some of the best stories get told over and over again. Last week at church, we buried Mr. Wall, the oldest living descendant of the Wall family for whom Walltown is named. Mr. Wall was a walker, even into his 90s. So everyone has a story to tell about offering Mr. Wall a ride. He often refused them or seeing him push a lawnmower clear across town. Mr. Wall was also a storyteller. To remember him is to tell the stories he used to tell about this place and its people. Half an hour later, we're still sitting around telling stories. This way of life is fragile, and folks around here know it. Our Mr. Walls are dying, and the times are changing in Walltown. The conversation turns to issues in the neighborhood, and someone mentions the widely held suspicion that people with money might eventually push us out. This gives Miss Carolyn the opportunity to recite one of her favorite monologues, the one about how I'm going to sell out to the highest bidder and buy a motor home, which she has perfected almost like a good sermon. I love how at the end, when her eyes are wide and she's yelling a little, Miss Carolyn will say, Don't y'all worry. I ain't leaving for good. I'll still roll through here and wave at y'all every once in a while. What, after all, would be the point of seeing the world in a Winnebago if you didn't come back to tell the story? And what is the point of a community, of a life even, if we don't sit down and take the time to enjoy it by remembering. One block down at the bottom of the hill, I walk past Miss Annie's house on the opposite side of the street. Since she fell and broke her hip a few months ago, Miss Annie has been in the nursing home. After I visited her there a few weeks ago, her daughter told me she was afraid Miss Annie would never come home again. But as I look both ways to cross Inglewood Avenue, I notice Miss Annie at home in her wheelchair, sitting on her front porch. She is talking to a neighbor, 
visiting, as we say around here, hanging on to the life she knows for whatever time remains. I know for sure that we are getting to visit perhaps a little more now that some of you and us, I have two actually, have gotten our vaccines. But we still have to be careful because the numbers are really going up here in Michigan. And uh, however, it doesn't make us not want to visit. I remember somebody telling me last week about meeting up with somebody, I think at a tent at St. Ambrose or something like that, where they could visit together and uh, not be in the company of anybody else where there was concern about getting the pandemic, getting the virus, I should say. So yeah, visiting, visiting. We usually have to drive to do much of that even around here. But I yelled at my neighbor the other day and said, welcome home after he got back from Florida. It's always good to see our neighbors. Let's close with prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I hope you find someone with whom you can visit today.